You're listening to Green Beats Podcast. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30 day free trial at audibletrial.com forward slash JP. Coronavirus in the U.S., energy vampires, and protection from negativity. somewhere in western North Carolina. Yeah. Yeah. Doing the podcast again. And before we get started, just, uh, just a couple things we'd like to say. Love. How are you? <laughs> so anyway, welcome back to Creepy's Podcast. We're going to do it like this. This episode is about all sorts of different things, but primarily coronavirus, energy vampire type stuff, right? Mm-hmm. And for protection from negativities. Yes. So anyway, we're doing a podcast, like we said, from an undisclosed location in Western North Carolina, probably a hospital bed type scenario. Mm-hmm. And we're joined with a very special guest for this particular podcast, a surprise special guest, Pepper. <laughs> Pepper is our dog, who is uh, right now breaking the, the rules. Yes. And is laying at the foot of the... I mean, this bed has a name. It's like the Spirit Master 9000 or something like that. I don't know. But anyway, the reason why we're broadcasting, the reason why we're broadcasting in this particular area and this bed is because, this is kind of clear you into the last episode, you didn't listen to that one, I kind of broke my neck. Yeah. So I've been a little preoccupied by this neck brace, so I'm sort of banging, I'm not quite home yet. I've been moved to, this is the, what is this called? This is the, basically this is an area where, you do physical therapy and learn how to do things like walk. Yeah. And tie your shoes. And, um, Regre- re- regain strength. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, when you break your neck, you have a tendency to be a little weak. So that's why I've kind of been going through and doing that. Hopefully one day I'll be out of here pretty soon. But yes. until then, you're seizing the opportunity and the amazing internet from this location. <laughs> That's because true. If you follow our podcast, you know it is a slight struggle for us because we have satellite internet because we live way out in the middle of nowhere. You know, yeah. It's basically the internet stone age. And we have a little bit of a hard time with the internet, so so we're here again. Yeah. So uh, before we get started, though, if you have something you'd like to share with the podcast, maybe a story or an idea or something you'd like us to cover, we have a toll-free telephone number for you to actually give us a call. And that phone number is going to be 575-208-4025. Yeah. So, I guess we should tell you what the podcast is all about. My name is Greg. And I'm Omi. And we are your hosts for the Creep Geeks Podcast. And the podcast is what? Uh, Creep Geeks Podcast is an offbeat news podcast that takes a lighthearted approach to the paranormal, cryptid, strange, silly, and the trending tech topics circulating the web. Broadcasting paranormal news and fun stories from an undisclosed location in western North Carolina. So, there you go. So, now you know what we're all about. Yeah. We like to do this sort of thing. We do like to talk about paranormal and weird news and all sorts of stuff like that. We also like to do paranormal investigations, make videos, and share content with you. Yes. The listener slash viewer. So, just last week we had a live stream. Hope you tuned in for that. If you didn't tune in for that and you'd like to know what we were talking about, uh, you can check us out on YouTube. We have a YouTube channel. Creep Geeks Podcast. Yep. yep. And there you'll find our live stream. And you can also go to our official website. Uh, the link should be there. That's going to be creepgeeks.com. And we are on all social media platforms. We'll provide links in the show notes to this podcast episode. Yes, as along with everything we talk about in our podcast, all the notes are provided for you to peruse at your leisure. Yes. So, 
Okay, so let's talk about coronavirus because evidently it's a thing. Well, right? yes, but let's go ahead and start with the interesting random factoid. Okay. I have not taken my evening medication. <laughs> So I've talked about the coronavirus, and it is what it is. It's looking to be a pretty scary thing. But once upon a time, there was a even way more scarier virus that was out. And that's the subject of the interesting random factoid, which we'd like to start our show with. Yes. And that interesting random factoid is during the Spanish flu epidemic of 1918, doctors either prescribed several shots of whiskey and alcohol or none at all. There you go. Yes. Well, flu, yeah. bad, take a couple shots. You'll feel better, yeah. Or you'll die. Now, others recommended at least half a bottle of wine a day or a glass of port wine after a very hot bath, which actually kind of makes sense. Sure. Yeah. Bad, yeah. Many people also relied on folk remedies like eating and bathing in onions. Hmm. To prevent the flu, the Colgate Company recommended avoiding tight clothing and shoes and chewing food carefully. There you go. Those yes. Are all things that your great grandparents would use to help prevent death. Here's a fun fact. The yeah. reason why they called it the Spanish flu epidemic, or the Spanish influenza epidemic of 1918, was not because it was created by the Spanish, or it came from the Spanish. It was actually caused by returning soldiers coming back from World, world War One, and most countries that were involved in that whole, whole sort of thing knew that there was a flu epidemic influenza going around. Yeah. And kept it secret, but Spain decided to let the world know that there was a pandemic. Oh. And since they brought it out and put it out in the public news, they took so the fall. They, it just yeah. became known as the Spanish flu. That's messed up. Yeah. Well, I mean, there was a lot of terrible things happening in World War One. That's where, uh, you know, you had everything from like mustard gas, where you, you know, chemical warfare was used in trench warfare. So it was pretty, yeah. uh, pretty horrific time. And later on, they banned chemical weapons because of that. Yeah, so those are things. Anyway, so the, the Spaniards decided, you know, country of Spain was like, yo, man, there is a terrible, terrible flu epidemic going about that's killing people. We need to let people know. Yeah, yeah. and so there, it became known as the Spanish flu. And it, it killed a lot of people, like 18 million people or something crazy like that. I don't remember the exact number, mm. but it was a lot. Yeah. And much is the situation with the possible coronavirus pandemic that may exist. 50 million people. Ooh. Oh, and that's funny. It, it ranges estimated 20 million to 50 million victims, including some 675,000 Americans. Yeah. So that's pretty scary. So. And, you know, that was during a time where I don't believe penicillin was a thing or anything like that, really. And it, you had you know, interesting ways to combat that flu, like wear loose clothes, drink a lot, chew slowly. <laughs> that, <laughs> and that Colgate Company tip, you know, yeah. that reminds me of some like straight up Kellogg stuff. Remember that documentary that, yeah. or not even, it was like a. Yeah, with their health flakes. Yeah, so. Kind of crazy. <clears throat> and honestly, if they would have said brush your teeth more often, it probably would have helped. <laughs> if they would have said, you know, brush your teeth more, that's a fun fact too. Because there's a sign in, in my undisclosed hospital room that basically says, help prevent pneumonia by brushing your teeth more often. Oh. Because it kills the bacteria in your mouth. And if you've got pneumonia, pneumonia, cacali, or whatever it's called. Yeah. Uh, you know, bacteria in your mouth by brushing your teeth more often, it kills it, and hopefully you'll give yourself pneumonia. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, like, what? Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so, moving back into the podcast, the coronavirus has been around for a minute, it seems, and we've talked about it in about three or four different podcasts that we've done. Yeah. Including the one before Book My Neck, which just happened to be Super Bowl Sunday. And the last time we did a podcast where we talked about, you know, the podcasts that we've done talking about coronavirus and the fact that Book My Neck, we posed a question. And the question was, since I'm not a sports ball guy, because I was out doing roof racks and taking them and removing, removing them, removing them from the great, I can't even, cannot even. <laughs> removing the roof rats from our albino rhino, our simple DIY temperman. Yeah. I had no idea who was playing in the Super Bowl. And I asked the question, basically, mm -hmm. if you know who was playing in the Super Bowl, let us know. And to date, I still don't know who played in the Super Bowl, because I've been waiting on you, our wonderful listeners, to clue me in. Well, they can now, always... If you have clued me in, and I just haven't seen it, I apologize, but I don't think that's the case. 
They can always clue you in by sending you an email. And that's going to be contact at creepgeeks.com. Or you can hit us up on Facebook and let Greg know. Yes. And that's going to be Creep Geeks Podcast. Just type it into the search on Facebook. Yes. So. So I still don't know who won the Super Bowl at this point. I don't really care. I don't have much <laughs> skin in the game, as it were. Yeah. But this coronavirus is uh, a little sketchy. Yes. And when we did our live stream on Friday, we actually talked about the coronavirus and the possibility of this being a pandemic, but not being yet called a pandemic, but it probably should be. And some things you can do to maybe protect yourself, you know, yeah. with the upcoming, well, basically just to protect yourself from the upcoming future if it does become worse. But we need to talk about... There's been some updates. Yeah, some updates with the whole coronavirus thing. And... And you were going to talk, tell us all about that because I don't have any links or things to speak intelligently. <laughs> That's okay. Well, the biggest update is on Friday we talked about the uh, woman who was basically identified as the community spreader of the coronavirus in California. Yeah, that's not an official title. That's yeah. What we're calling her, and hopefully... They had a title for it. It was really weird, but it was like the... Some, some, it may be, though. It could be... The yeah. Zero. Almost. But you can't really say that because that whole Japanese cruise ship, some of those people came back to America well, and they went through California. I don't know what you call the patient that actually spreads the virus unknowingly. Okay. Because yeah. she's in California. She's spreading the virus or has the virus. Mm -hmm. But she has not gone to any of those places that or done any of the things that, you know, supposedly will make you more, um, in other words, give you the coronavirus. Yeah, so prone, she susceptible. In province, eat the koala bear. Yeah. She <clears> wasn't <throat> in Wuhan province at the secret, you know, Wuhan <clears throat> laboratory that's the only laboratory in the world that could actually make coronavirus, which is probably a militarized virus. Mm -hmm. she, was in, she was on a cruise ship. You know, she wasn't in any of those things, but here she is in California and she's obviously spread it, right? Yeah, unknowingly. But what that means is that somebody has it other than her and unknowingly spread it to her. Yeah, so is she really the patient zero right. almost of right. that particular community? Yeah. Now, so that's the scary part. Right? Yeah. Because she's got it, didn't do anything to get it, so who gave it to her? You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Now, the updates from that wom that woman's story are that um, two healthcare workers in California tested positive. The workers had been exposed to an individual who is now being treated for the virus at a hospital in Sacramento. And then right now, the New York State reports its first case of coronavirus in a woman in her late 30s who had traveled to Iran. And Iran just recently came out with a, uh, yeah. a statement, didn't they, with the general... <laughs> like I was coming into the hospital and it was funny because there was uh there was two patients watching TV and I stopped because it was like all coronavirus stuff and it was like I guess a prime minister and somebody else or something like a secretary yeah, of something general, some kind of general, yeah. yeah and the dude who's reading the statement is just like he's sweating and he's like not looking at the crowd yeah. but the dude next to him is wiping his brow and sweating profusely like he has just gotten out of a meeting where his boss said yeah, we need to be careful how we talk about this. Yeah, here's also a fun fact. Uh, Amazon says two employees infected as tech companies introduce new restrictions worldwide. So, uh, so you know, buying your stuff from China and say, well, I'm not going to give me no coronavirus that way. I'll just order stuff off Amazon. Pay a little extra. <laughs> so I'd like the corona free. I think everybody should be opening their mail with a bottle of Lysol or a can of Lysol or yeah, something. It's crazy because now you got Scotland, Dominican Republic have our first cases, Ecuador reports even more. Yeah. And so they're saying which is worse, the coronavirus or the flu? Yeah. So I'm going to click the link so we can see. Now, this is the thing those two healthcare workers that tested positive, um, they were exposed to a patient now being treated for the virus at a hospital in Sacramento. Sacramento, The workers' conditions were not immediately available, but public health officials in Alameda and Solano County said in a news release that the workers were isolated in their homes. So that's something else we talked about on Friday's live stream, that whole being quarantined type stuff. Our problem is with this coronavirus, we don't know its incubation period it's full incubation period and how long that's true these people can walk around and they're also saying there's no coronavirus vaccinations available mm -hmm. may be available in a year or two which i don't think that's up. yeah much more which is funny because this is the most current article and like we were talking about a couple of days ago on the live stream there's 
two different countries now trying to work on a vaccine, Israel and Australia. Yeah. So what's going on here? You know, realistically, we should probably start calling this COVID-19. True. Yeah. Because yeah. that seems to be the, you know, since that's the real name of the coronavirus, uh, I think it's going to get to the point where we're going to see a lot of news outlets, uh, social media outlets actually curbing uh, the amount of, references or posts about coronavirus. Yeah, haven't we already started to see posts about that? Yeah. Yeah, so we're going to start calling it you know, COVID-19, I guess. So we kind of see what happens. That. The thing is, is that, uh, I don't know, I think this thing is well on its way to becoming a pandemic and nobody's really saying anything, you know, and the CDC. Oh, Wow. Yep, so Facebook is cracking down on ads about coronavirus, yep. and they're taking a hard line against fake news. Yeah, so and the way this works is, is that if you report something that you've read you know, on the Internet and you think it's a reputable source and you post it to share the information, if Facebook deems it's fake news, or I should say, if one of Facebook's fact checkers... Third party. Third party paid fact checkers thinks it's fake news... Then they'll go ahead and flag your post, and then you get in trouble for it. Yeah. And you get thrown to Facebook jail. And then it, there's no way for you to, to dispute it. So if they honestly, if they don't like the website that you got the information from, then they can get you. So we're not going to call it <coughs> coronavirus anymore. We're going to call it COVID-19. Or COVID. Yeah. So just, just to kind of completely stop our train of conversation and jump into something a little bit different. Yeah. Uh, we started realizing that. So anyway. Is this thing a pandemic yet or, or not? Well, Who knows, right? yeah, and getting back to the Facebook real quick, I wanted to mention, um, they're canceling their F8 developer conference. I wonder why. Yeah. If it's not so bad, right? And they're starting to kind of curb the post about COVID-19. Then why are they canceling things? Why are, you know, why are we going through all these extremes all of a sudden? Exactly. So anyway, kind of moving through this sort of thing, it's like, what, what exactly is going on with this virus? When we have our own theory about the virus, um, you know, that it may be engineered or possibly a weaponized virus that's maybe not completely weaponized, can't really prove it. And the thing about this is that you can't prove either. Like, you can't prove for or against the fact that this may or may not be a weaponized virus. Although, there are lots of sort of... Uh, um, coincidences, if you will. Yeah. The only one of the only places in the world that could actually create a virus of this magnitude is in Wuhan. Mm-hmm. And guess where COVID-19 came from? Wuhan. Okay. I don't think it came from being, you know, you're eating koala bear meat, so that's what made you sick kind of a thing. This virus is kind of sketchy, you know, because not only does it, not, not only is it one of the vi- a few viruses out there that can go from, like, human to animal, or animal to human. Yeah. You know, it's also made in a place, or it's also created, I can't say any of that stuff, right? It's also sort of magically pop up from one of the few places in the world that, that could actually make it. Yeah. The Chinese actually released all the information about the virus to the world. Mm-hmm. Said, hey, here's what we know so far, right? There's been reports of you know, people being locked in buildings and doors being welded shut, all sorts of crazy stuff's going on with this. And it just seems like it's pretty extreme when originally they were like, oh, well, you know, you have SWAS, was it SARS, and the bird flu, and all sorts of crazy stuff, and you know, this isn't going to be nearly as bad, but it does seem like there's a lot more extreme to be taken. Yeah. Entire cruise ship quarantine, you mm. know, all the people with all, their, uh, all the diplomats and, and all the staff being pulled out of consulates and being sent back to their home countries. China itself was on lockdown. Oh, and I did see a, uh, a neat picture uh, today that showed the amount of pollution that came out of China just three or four weeks ago. Oh. Compared to now. Yeah. Right? And there's like this big brown sort of cloud over China, right, because of all the manufacturing facilities, plants, and things like that. Yeah. And now, since they're like pretty much locked down, and they're at really <sighs> low uh, production numbers or being shut down with all these factories, that... It looks like there's no pollution there at all. So it's like all their pollution coming away because they're not really working. So that's kind of 
you know, telling for a virus that's not supposed to be that bad, you know, to be able to see. But doesn't that go into some of those other theories, though, that this this virus has a point, like it's trying to, like, if we go way tinfoil hat, some of the theories that this virus is going to help cleanse, the, clean up the earth and stuff like that. Get it out. By the fact that we just won't work for a day. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. all sick and they don't have to work, or they can't work, so plants, manufacturing facilities, so now the amount of like carbon ton emissions gets reduced. Yeah, you know, you know I, I, it would have to be such a long, longer running effect, like it would have to be years before it, it would have any real effect whatsoever on climate change. Hmm, okay, you know, so the amount of CO2 emissions and all that sort of thing. Would have to be such a in great quantity to be like the you know it's always the dose that makes a, po- a poison or the exposure over time, right? Mm-hmm. So I think if everything, if, if a large chunk of the planet stopped manufacturing and causing pollution, it would take a long time for that a, a lasting effect on the climate change or the climate situation. Is going. Well, and I was reading um, one of the articles with the. World Health Organization raising the coronavirus threat to very high, but not pandemic, not yet. Uh, They're reading us. There's these statistics and top line notes in this article. Um, One of them is big number because everybody wants to know the number. The big number, according to Forbes.com, which I they're reputable, in my opinion, 83,000. That's their number. Uh, 83,000 cases. So far. Mm-hmm. And that's the number of reported cases from a total of 53 countries as of Friday. That's a huge jump. Yeah. When we first started talking about COVID-19. Yeah. A couple weeks ago. Now, over 2,800 people have passed away, sadly, according to the New York Times. Yeah. Um, wow. Gosh. And, um... And then this this article goes into the whole stock market plummeting type thing. But there's new news that I'd have to find sources saying it's starting to uptick again. So, I don't know. Yeah. Kind of crazy. I will say, if you're kind of freaked out about it, it might be time to start collecting some canned goods. Oh, yeah. Get some water, get some canned goods, get some, some food that you can eat so if you do get locked in your house or the apartment building door gets welded shut, <laughs> like allegedly what happened in China, you might be able to uh, eat for a while and maybe save some water. Yeah. And that kind of goes into that uh, CNN health article I found where, and I'm going to read this title the way it is, preparing for a pandemic, what should I buy? Are there places I should avoid? Literally four years ago, you would never read an article headline like that off yeah. CNN. Yeah, like, oh, That's yeah. straight up like a prepper blog type title. Yeah, exactly. And now we're dealing with a mainstream news website posting a pretty inflammatory, like, you know, well, it is CNN. panicky. But yeah, I mean, they do that. That's you know, kind of their thing. So they're going to yeah. you know, dramatize everything. But it, it kind of makes sense that there is such a... A scary thing, or the possibility of such a scary thing like this COVID nineteen virus getting out of control. Yeah, it might be good to be able to have some supplies. Yeah, you know, and they're they're sort of keep you separated and away from everybody who has it. They're recommending some things that I think a lot of folks wouldn't have thought of, but you know, preppers, survivalists, other people, they would have. I mean, yeah, a two week supply of food and water, sure. as well as over the counter medications you tend to take. Having any non-prescription drugs and other health supplies on hand, including pain relievers, stomach remedies, cough and cold medicine, and then fluids with electrolytes and vitamins, yes. which I thought was really interesting because, you know, Gatorade, Pedialyte, things like that are going to be flying off the shelves. Yeah, so basically, if you're looking at stockpiling stuff, stockpile food, and also stockpile stuff that you have, you know, that you would want to use when you were sick with the flu. Yeah. So if you've got, like, diarrhea Get some diarrhea medicine or whatever, you know, get all your cold medicines ready, get them supplied. And I would take it a step further. I'd say instead of just a two-week supply, make sure it's a two-week supply per, you know. Person. Yeah, if you can. Yeah. I mean, granted, like. I got me a two-week supply of food. Yeah. Guys, yeah. Just don't walk into Walmart saying, yes, I'd like a two-week supply of a leave cold and sinus for four people. They yeah. won't allow that, no. so. <laughs> get your cough medicine. Yeah. 
probably a good idea. We're probably going to do something like that. Yeah. Of course, in my particular case, I'm already in the hospital, so. You're already in the safest place. Am I, though? Are you really in the safest place? I think the safest place so, is a dude living on the side of a mountain with, Without giving away your location, you are in an isolated section of this hospital that doesn't have active but, patients. But mm-hmm. it has staff that flip to different parts of the building. Only when they're short. So... And, most mm. hospitals are short. <laughs> That's true, because so of this virus. <laughs> right. Not even because of this virus, it's in general. So, I mean, sometimes I see different faces that I've never seen before every day. Yeah. So, you know. And that, that kind of goes with the whole the shortage thing. This article goes further into, should I work from home? Should I keep my child home from school? And the problem is, with some of these, not everybody has the ability to work from home. Right. And... Uh, while we were talking on the live stream about those rural towns in um, Tennessee that were closing down the entire public school system, right. not everybody has afforded that luxury. There's still states that are like, hey, if your kid's out of school for X amount of time, your kid fails, you know? So, and it won't matter. And there's still companies that will be like, well, we know there's a, a you know, a yeah. pandemic going on, but, you know, hey, attendance, we're going to need you here. Yeah. And so this whole thing is a mess. Yeah. It's just a giant inconvenience so far. I told her to get much worse. So, anyway, what can you do? Now, there are some weird things about this article, like, do I need a face mask? The CDC does not recommend that people who are well wear face masks. Rather, the CDC recommends to only wear a mask if a healthcare professional recommends it. A face mask should be used by people who have the novel C COVID. To, uh, COVID-19 and are showing symptoms. That is in order to protect others from the risk of getting infected. That's not fair. Well, I mean, you, if you're sick, they want you to, to curb your exposure. Yeah. Um, inducing capability. Um, but the, I guess they're saying if you're healthy, then you shouldn't. I, don't know. I, it, mean, I, I get it. I get what they're saying. But I don't agree. Well, yeah. Yeah. I mean... What about people who, like on our live stream, we had that woman who has MS and then people with immune system issues. They're going to want to, I, I want to wear a mask, yeah. you know. I say wear it if you want. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they can make recommendations all day long. I say if, if you think you need to protect yourself from wearing Yeah. But, but then it, know, yeah. I think the big thing would be wash your filthy hands all the time. Yeah. And and that's a thing because. Uh, don't touch anything. I have some friends who work in public health up north and they were, you know, they've, they've had these meetings, they've had these circulations going around to them as public health employees that are like some of the best ways to prevent the, the spread are going to be, um, are going to be washing your hands on the regular, uh, avoiding contact with sick individuals or individuals you think may be sick or, um, or, <laughs> out of your head. That's how it starts. yeah, you. yes, you are. Or the big one, which was don't touch your face. Yeah, with your hands. Yeah. Or your feet. So, yeah. Uh, the problem with that, though, is one of the people who was telling me this, the first thing out of their mouth was what happens if you wear glasses because they wear glasses. And so do I. So you're going to touch your face. When you push your glasses up on your nose, because everybody's glasses fall down, yeah. even well-fitting pairs eventually slide down, you're going to touch your face. And you're touching your face near your eyeballs, which is a very vulnerable spot for diseases and germs to get in. Yeah, and you don't even wash your grubby glasses half the time anyway. I have to, because I got an oily face. You know, so. you know, <laughs> I'm just saying, as a whole, most people don't physically wash their glasses. Hmm. Or their mouses, right? Yeah. Or their keyboards. Or, or their devices, phones. Right. Yeah. And you know, everybody takes a phone in the bathroom. So it's just full of fecal poops all over that. <laughs> COVID 19 and fecal poops, and what are you going to do? Oh, man. It's a terrible, crappy situation. There's a, uh, the oatmeal cartoon, and you take the little quizzy type thing on the page, and it tells you just how much fecal poop is on your phone. Yeah. Yeah, it's bad. All right, so moving on. What's the next thing we're supposed to talk about? Um. Hmm. Well, I mean, we have talked a lot about this this virus. Yeah. We're, we're <laughs> yeah. 
Now, the other thing we are going to talk about, we did talk about it a little bit, but energy vampires. Yeah. So this podcast is not necessarily a recap of the live stream. It is kind of wicked. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, energy vampires. We all know somebody who sucks the life out of you. Yeah. Takes away your positive energy. You're all happy enough to go talk to them. And you're just like, oh, God, come on. Yeah, there's a couple different types of energy vampires that we talked about on the live stream. as we make reference to it again. But there's just something about meeting somebody who... They, and they can be the, just the nicest person in the world, and they can just be sucking the life out of you, man. Mm-hmm. So they're called energy vampires, right? So you have the type of energy vampire that's unaware that they're actually doing it. It's kind of a rare thing. Then you have the energy vampire that actually is aware, and they do it as a way to gain power over you. Like, well, you know, they may deliberately sort of shut you down because they get some kind of... Um, reverse power out of it and enjoy making your life miserable. You know, a lot of times because they're miserable, so they're trying to exercise their own power, right? Yeah. But you have the energy vampire that just can suck the life out of you because that's just what they do. Like, references to, like, suck your and incubuses and mother-in-law. And, <laughs> like you know I mean? and, and we've talked about this in the past, and I'm going to relink an article we've talked about because we did energy vampires right. months ago. And, yeah, I think it, it's a topic that keeps coming up because we well, keep encountering them. It keeps coming up because every time I experience one, I put it in the podcast. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. All right. And we all have worked for energy vampires. It's just basically, no matter what you do and no matter how good things are going, they are doom and gloom. And, well, you did a good job on that project, but we've got to remember we got these 14 other things to possibly fail at, you know. Or, like, my experience where I worked on a very small team and every time this one team member would have a meeting when the meeting would be done all, you know, two or three of us would be like, man, I just got to go to lunch or something. I just got to get out of this room, you know, and it would get really bad like that. And then the energy vampire in question would just refuel all that negativity in such a short time and then just keep unloading it on, on me and the other people. And it's funny, those other people, as much as we didn't have in common, we were all very sensitive. Yeah. It's like, did the energy vampire call a little herd of empaths to dump on? Some people do that. Some you know? people actually surround themselves with people that they can do that with. Hmm. You know, and there's also some people just thrive on drama. Yeah. And it doesn't necessarily make them an energy vampire. It just makes them like a negative energy pump. Well, they're just pumping out negative energy because that's how they thrive. And by pumping out so much negative energy, it overrides so much positive energy you can come up with, and thereby sort of draining you. So the effort of you defending yourself somehow, whether it's psychically or physiologically or whatever, against a negative energy pump wears you down. Yeah. And so it's, even though they're not sucking the life out of you, they are killing you slowly because you just, you know, it's like your shields aren't strong enough. Yeah, and it's funny that you said that because basically just now you've covered at least two different energy vampire types according to this website, uh, Loner Wolf. I'll put a link in the show notes. You just covered the Dominator Vampire and the Melodramatic Vampire. Yes, and then there's another one, the Narcissist Vampire, which is one I've encountered, and it's just, oh. And then there's the Victim or Martyr Vampire. Yeah, yeah. And the funny thing is the victim or martyr vampire, as well as any of these, they can kind of, you know, dual, you know, dual yield. (laughs) So it could be a judgmental vampire and a, you know, victim vampire. Uh, But the melodramatic one, that's the one that I can't, I have a really hard time with. Because you can sit them down and you were mentioning before, some people are not aware of it. Right. Some of these people, like the melodramatic energy vampire, you will sit them down. You'll explain to them how good of a person they are, but that they are manifesting this negative energy and causing their own problems, and they will just dismiss it. Of course. You can't cure these people. You know, one, maybe the ones that are unaware mm-hmm. are able to change them and say, you know, hey, you're a negative all the time. Kind of thing. But for the most part, you really can't cure these people. But we tried. We've actually, I, I yeah. Don't try and see, my defense against most 
energy vampires is rage. Hmm. You know, because if you get mad enough, because you can try, like, you know, texting out of conversations or avoidance, that sort of thing, it doesn't quite work all the time, but sometimes you just got to get mad. And see, me, it's just to get all, like, pragmatic and diplomatic and go, look, here are the solutions to whatever you're, whatever nasty you're bringing to the table. And I've, we've both tried that several times with certain energy vampires with limited success. So I'm just like, you know, I don't want to hear it. I'm done. I got to go. Yeah. And, but I mean, you know, it doesn't happen like right out of the gate. It usually takes multiple experiences to go, just, just stop. I don't care anymore. I can't, I can't take on your burden. Yeah. You know, but there are ways to protect yourself. And you put a little nice little link in here about using guides, the guide that you have, and using protective stones to protect you from evil, uh, evil or negativity. Yeah. So this. You can take these stones, right? Mm -hmm. You can throw them. No. <laughs> Well, some of the things we haven't talked about with the energy vampires and just negativity in general. I mean, what, a couple of weeks ago we were talking about cursed objects yeah. and bad luck in general. Yeah. Um, we've encountered negative energy, whether we want to call that spirits or not, I'm not sure. Yeah. And then again, running into the energy vampires, things like that. You got to protect yourself somehow, whether it's verbally, whether you're not a spiritual person and you just kind of set some personal boundaries. There's something, yeah, there has to be a way to protect yourself um, mentally and spiritually. In this sense, I've provided a link and it's uh, from a pretty decent person off medium called Crystals, which protect you against evil spirits. I'm going to take it a step further after looking at this list and say, these different types of crystals will predict, uh, well, they should help protect you or empower you against different conditions. So not just evil spirits, in my opinion. Yeah, I'll throw out a little disclaimer or disclosure or advice or whatever with something like this, too. If you take this list of stones or protective crystals, they're all going to work better if said crystal or stone calls to you. Yeah. Like if you look at it, a bunch of stones in a pile and one grabs your attention that's probably one you should buy yeah and to take that a step further <laughs> yes you can you can hop onto amazon right now and go find like a, a an assortment of gemstones raw gemstones or whatever or tumbled gemstones but i'm recommending you shop local so go to your nearest little gem and rock shop even if it's not like a a witchy or pagan one if it's just a nerd shop like rock nerd shop like i love to go to just go in there feel the stones find one that calls to you like for me when it comes to protective stones i really like ones that are squared off yeah. you know so i like them a little squarish some people like them completely smooth or round you know whatever you like well yeah so and it's funny i had this conversation what, last night or two nights ago with one of our listeners? Uh, black tourmaline. We actually had this conversation today with the bracelet you gave one of the wonderful guys that works here. Yeah, that's at true. Our location, and I said, hey, man, yeah. that's a protective thing to help you. And he was talking about all the negative, negative people he's currently working with, and he's hoping that that bracelet will help curb his tongue. Oh, really? <laughs> He's like, oh, you know, I might have to lash out at him. And I'm like, hey, well, man, just, just, just be cool. So yeah. he finds himself in a negative environment right now. And, you know, the hope is that that bracelet help, you know, well, protect him in this negative environment. And he's, a, he's moving on from this place to transfer to somewhere else. But I just thought that was kind of funny. Yeah. Because when I brought that up, you know, hey, that's supposed to help protect you. He's like, really? Yeah. So he, and he explained kind of exactly what we're dealing with. Not necessarily energy vampires, but just, just general overall negativity. And these stones will help protect you against overall negativity along with energy vampir vampirism. Yeah. And so. so this is just a general list. Black tourmaline, which I swear by. Um, amethyst, it's a good one. Yeah. Black tourmaline is all around protection. Yeah. Against, you know, uh, harmful spirits and forces and amethyst. Right? Yeah. Like and you develop your psychic abilities. But you with psychic Now, we, I could spend whole episodes on each of these, but with Amethyst, I'm going to say... Well, if you want to hear something like that, if you'd like to hear me talk in great agonizing detail about these stones, you should leave us a note. Please continue. 
I would like to say that amethyst is kind of hit or miss, which is funny because amethyst is my birthstone and I have limited success with it. Yes. So, um, again, this list is just a general guide. Find stones that work for you. Tourmaline quartz, which is a good one. It's kind of hard to find, but that is also a really good one because it, it kind of pushes more of the positive environment your way while leaving no room for the negativity. Uh, jet stone, which is very similar to obsidian, uh, that's another common purpose. It's like having salt and pepper in your cabinet. It's yeah, a <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we have a piece at home. I'll bring it in. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, fluorite, fluorite's uh, highly protective and beneficial against guarding one from any negativity nearby. Fluorite, it's one of those finicky stones. You either get along with it or you don't. Um, and I'll just leave it at that. When I was younger, I had really bad luck with fluorite. Now I'm older, and it's it's working. Jasper is my my that's my that's my jam because jasper and agate they go hand in hand with petrified wood which is my stone um it is a supreme nurturer and uh it helps through times of stress and brings about stability and that's pretty you much it i should be bringing one in for you uh, i'm good man i got i don't even know what this is i got hematite so you have a combo and i'm planning on starting to sell these in the creep geek store I created, because the first two nights Greg was here, he had these really weird nightmares that evolved into old hag syndrome, where he felt that there was something above him. You want to tell this story? No, I was going to say that for another time. But, Which yeah. I will, I will say that for another time. Yeah. But anyway, tell him what this So, I went ahead and created two bracelets for him. One is known as the Empath Protection Bracelet. You can find the recipe online, or you can just wait for me to post one for sale on the Creep Geek site. And it is a simple black tourmaline, rose quartz, and hematite bracelet. And those three are known to help empaths and sensitive people. And then the second one is just a, Greg's favorites, which are some halite blue skulls, a jasper thunderbird, and some simple leather. So, yeah. And so far, he seems to be doing okay. Yeah, so. working. I'm not seeing any weird spirits anymore, so... Yeah. That and I'm not taking as much drugs. Would you stop? <laughs> when you break your neck, they give you drugs. Yeah. Like, you know, a lot of them are not good because it's not my goal just to be, you know, uh, you know yeah. I'm a big fan of, of the way the healthcare systems, you know, do pain medication and then you have to chase the side effects that come with pain medication. But so anyway, I'm not taking any pain medication aside from Tylenol. And so, I, I, didn't, I don't want to come out of here. And it hasn't been that long. And people are like, well, you know, you should take it if you need it. Kind of thing. And yes, you should. But I've always been one to where, you know, if I can go without taking something, I will. So that I have no tolerance. So that if they're like, guess who's got COVID-19? <sighs> well, we got some antibiotics or whatever. <sighs> I might have a better chance and that sort of thing. But anyway, kind of is what it is. But I thought it was pretty interesting with the, you know, sort of the, uh, the stones that you can use and the fact that, with the energy negative energy sort of played into the podcast today actually talking to that gentleman yeah he's been a really cool cat uh, yeah it's just kind of a weird sort of synchronicity maybe yeah and it's i had a very long conversation with a, one of the podcast listeners about it uh she's been looking for some help with stuff like that so See, whether you believe in it or yeah. not i mean it's up to you of course um i just think it seems to work yeah you know i'm, I'm not one of these people it's like you know, let me get a magic healing crystal bowl and a, you know, I, I, but I don't know. And, and it's, it's all the belief and the intent. So if you believe in it and you have the intent there, it'll help. I'm not saying, you know, these stones are like the pine saw or fabuloso of the spirit world, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. It, and in certain situations, some things are just too evil. And if that happens, you need to go seek help of some sort. Yes. So, and of course, you know, with all the stuff that we talk about, if you're experiencing any COVID symptoms like COVID, hey, don't just grab a crystal and think that's going to pull you through, man. Go to the doctor. Yeah. Oh, er, energy vampires. Yeah, energy vampires. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it's an energy vampire, grab a friend, you know. Yeah. Well, so. You might have an energy vampire, but, you know, some yeah. people, I think, you know, I'm not talking to the essential oil people out there. Yeah. They think, oh, 
You got an earache? Go ahead and, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. You, you broke your neck, rub some, like, lavender oil and almond paste or some crazy. Uh, because, honestly, I don't think that yeah. would help quite that much. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe not. But, you know, there's people like that. And then we could make joke, jokes about, you know, the vaxxer people versus the anti-vaxxer people. And they'll say, oh, you know. But we're not. But we're not. <laughs> Uh, there are different ways to protect yourself, and a lot of it is how much faith you put in whatever it is that you're using to try to protect yourself. Yeah. It's be very helpful. And if I sound like I'm talking kind of funny, it's because I'm still wearing this stupid neck brace because it's designed to keep my neck from exploding. Oh. Titanium and cadaver bone everywhere, I guess. <laughs> no, it's meant to... I was to talking to the PT person, you know, the physical therapist slash physical torturer. <laughs> no, it's just... Uh, you know... Very nice lady today. And she's like, well, you know, you've only had that on since like 20 days. And I'm like, well, yeah. I mean, how much longer is this thing supposed to be on? She's like, oh, in some cases, people can have them on for months. Yeah. But I'm like, I don't like you. <laughs> but it's true. Um, I don't know. Maybe I just don't have patience for this sort of thing. I'm, I'm ready for this thing to come off. I got walking to do. I got things to do. Just going to get a little bit of update. My prognosis Nobody's really talked to me at all about my prognosis. I think they're, think about it. they're waiting for your next doctor's appointment. Uh, yeah. So my next doctor's appointment, if you actually care at all, is I go back to the place that performed the amazing surgery that kept me alive, I guess. Mm -hmm. I mean, being completely honest, I'm pretty sure I probably wouldn't be here if I wasn't for that. Now, I know it wouldn't. There's no way to fix it. It had to be fixed. Yeah. You know, um, to figure out what's going on, I have to do some x-rays and stuff like that and see if I can take this this uh, thing off my neck. Um, but I'm good, you know. It's like my hands are a little tingly, but overall I can feel everything when I'm walking. And I don't know, man. It's kind of weird because they, they have so many different like tools and things out there to help you out with this sort of thing. So, yeah, I have no idea what my pro uh, prognosis actually is, but I think it's pretty good. Because everybody's like, ooh, you're doing so well. And I got stuff to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. We have stuff to do. We have events to go to. We have conferences and conventions to go to. We have interviews to do with famous people. <laughs> we have to go meet the famous people that we were going to meet before I decided to blow my neck out. Yeah. Or, yeah. you know what I've been telling people? What? I've been telling people before Greg decided to become a UFO for two seconds. You should call me a euphonaut. <laughs> euphonaut? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know. <laughs> But I mean, that's, that's the whole thing. Uh, I don't know. I consider myself pretty lucky. Uh, I do think that Reiki actually worked and was really helpful. I don't know if people are still doing it for me. If you are, yay. Yeah. Uh, if you're not, that's cool. And then um, Reiki, and then I have two friends who have been in the Southwest. Actually, we have four friends in the Southwest who are giving you very special, specific prayers. Nice. So. I don't know what they are, but I think it's working. Yes. So, yeah. Um, oh. I got to spend five minutes walking outside today with the help of this thing called the, uh, I don't know what it's called, wheel, wheel later, wheel later, I don't know. It's like a stand-up four-wheeled walker mm -hmm. with a seat built into it, and it has brakes, Oh. and it has a little basket in the front that I can put pepper in. <laughs> That's uh, pretty cool. And it has rims. Yeah, I don't know, I thought it was great, so... That little, you know, tennis ball walker thing. You ever seen, like, people shuffling around with the little, little aluminum walker with the tennis balls on the bottom of it? I don't think that's for me. I need something with rims and some brakes. A little basket for your dog. Yeah, so I'm out there cruising around talking to the uh, uh, physical therapist lady. She's like, I think you could do really well with one of these things. I'm like, yeah. You know, it's funny. When I was pulling in today, um, I saw an older, older patient. Rolling out. Rolling out with one of those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, across the road. Yeah, yeah. That's a big road. Like, I gotta go. <laughs> well, um, from what I found is that with the larger tires and stuff, it goes. They can go through grass and gravel. And, oh. Yeah, but it's you know it's crazy. This whole yeah. thing has been sort of nuts. But yeah. Anyway, so speaking of events and stuff that we were supposed to do. Yeah. So uh, there's a couple events out there that we're going to be doing, but there's one event. Um, it's not. It's. It's in support of Small Town Monsters, right? Yeah, uh, Small Town Monsters is only got a few days left on their Kickstarter. And that Kickstarter is UFOs, The Mothman, Legacy, and Bellwitch by Small Town Monsters. Yeah. 
I think they've got four days left on their Kickstarter, and I really recommend you guys check it out. Um, if, if you want to be involved, go ahead and back their project. Uh, the funding for this project funds all of their creative endeavors for 2020. So they're coming out. The first thing to come out is going to be On the Trail of UFOs, which is their documentary series that discusses the not just the current, but also, well, I guess the current state of the UFO community and the UFO phenomenon, as well as a look at some of the history of UFOs that isn't really talked about these days. Yeah. I mean, we saw, and I'll, I talked about this in our review that we wrote, we saw once Storm Area 51 hit the headlines, everything took off. And it was like, during that time, it was funny because Small Town Monster was actually filming for part of their series. Yeah. So they were in the thick of it. And so was the American public. And this kind of highlights the fact that with these new researchers, with these new enthusiasts, with these new believers, um, what is there to look forward to? And what is going on that is either preventing or helping the UFO community grow? Well, it seems to be popular to just report on whatever. Mm-hmm. And not actually report what actually happened. True. So I don't know if it's embellishment or I don't know. You know what I mean? Let's, let's the, make the, things, let's sort of embellish things, make things more grandiose than what they really are. And that's one of the reasons why I like Small Town Monsters. They will do a documentary and they interview you know, experiencers and they report it and document it. You know, in a way that's realistic. You know, not every video they have, you know, like for some of the ghosty sort of shows and things like that, every show there's like ghost experiences and crazy things happen and demon attacks and like every UFO Every show episode. Walks, like there's a UFO and here's, and it's not like that. I mean, because there's people out there who have been researching UFO stuff for like 40 years have never seen anything at all. I know. And then there's other ghost show people and ghost investigation shows where they've gone you know, to 300 different places and never really seen or experienced anything at all. And then you have other shows or people that are on these television shows that experience things every single episode. Yeah. And then you have like other documentaries that I'm making quotes in the air where they're like trying to lead you down this path that maybe doesn't necessarily exist. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like, hmm, the, the, the leap. Yeah. From what they actually experience to what they want you to believe that they believe is so huge. I'm like, I don't know if that really happened or not. I don't really see it happen that way. Yeah. Or to somehow wrap the story around them. Yeah, it's where it becomes all about them. Yeah. And not about the reason why the documentary was made in the first place. So they film what they film. The results are what they are. The information is what it is. And you can draw your own conclusion. Yeah. Yeah, I do like the way they're filming things and mixing things up a little bit, some of their filming techniques and stuff like that. Um, I think they do documentaries the way I would do documentaries. Or I have that skill. We're, how, I, how we aspire to sure. do documentaries. Yeah. yeah. Part of the problem why we're not probably good video documentarians is because, <laughs> A, we get wrapped up into doing our own thing and just kind of forget about it. And, B, we don't have five people to walk around with us to film stuff. Yeah. So we're going to get better. Maybe. Maybe. So, I don't know. It's just kind of one of those things where I think that if you want to watch a documentary, documentary series that's probably more aligned with being uh, realistic, watch it. Yeah. Now, they do special effects and stuff like that, too. So, it's just that's so boring. Thing. Oh, and that's the other thing. Like, Unlike... You, do, you know, you just, like, walk around yeah. and talk and go, hey, you know, um, whatever, I mean, we have seen some fantastic air quotes again documentaries yeah. on amazon and some of them you even have to pay for and the graphics and special effects are straight up like 2003 unreal tournament or something yeah. you know it's I like, like, stuff like that. I, would, <laughs> I would do it oh that's great but i mean you know, I don't know. yeah uh, I, I think out of the ones that we've seen that they, they sort of they're in our wheelhouse man i enjoy them i like the way they're filmed yeah and you know i like i don't know i just like them in general i think if you're going to watch these movies and you're looking for that sort of thing, um, man, they, they cover them all, so you might as well. Yeah, and, it, and we're putting it in, in the podcast because we are all hashtag support indie artists. 
Um, so we've got a link to their Kickstarter, but we also have a link to our review of the series because we did get to watch a few screeners and we also got to see a very, screeners. yes, yeah, screeners copies. yes, we, we even got to see a very special interview from somebody too. Yeah. So Who yeah, you, oh. yes, maybe a little bit of pepper. <laughs> <laughs> But no, they're worth watching, and they're family friendly, and all that stuff. And I mean, really, I mean, I, I just like them. They're good. They're, they're yeah. kind of done in the same vein. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, we're not going to keep going on and on. But they're worth watching. They're worth backing for Kickstarter if you'd like to do that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Because you're actually going to be able to back them in a Kickstarter and receive whatever it is you're backing. Yeah. Like all the other Kickstarters that you do, where you don't, they just. It didn't come to fruition. Like whatever. the whole Reddit, like, shitty Kickstarters. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're actually going to be able to see. You know. There's still people waiting for their cooler from, like, seven years ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I know. It's like. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you know, if you back them, you're going to be able to see them. And the On the Trail of UFO series starts first. Yeah. Um, and we enjoyed them. We did. And we actually, it's funny because we've seen um, people in the series mm-hmm. that we know. Yeah, so I was like, oh, yeah, I remember mm-hmm. that. Oh, yeah. yeah it's just kind of strange. Well, my thing is, like, the, the Bell Witch one is what I'm really looking yeah. forward to because I have a very tainted and limited view on the history of Bell Witch. I would like a clean history and breakdown yeah. because I, I really want to know what's going on with that. So, yeah. yeah. Definitely check out the links in the show notes for our podcast. Yes, indeed. So. Okay, so we're going to move into one of the last things we're going to talk about with podcasts for a couple different reasons. Number one, we've been going kind of long, and number two, we're about out of laptop juice. Yep. Uh, so up here. Um, so we've been able to have Pepper come and, and visit us in our undisclosed location, which has been pretty nice. And we've determined that she doesn't like this place. If you hear some jumbling around, that's us trying to plug in computers mm-hmm. as we do this. Because... Mm-hmm. So, our dog Pepper has been, in, been allowed to come visit, and it's been pretty nice, but she doesn't like hospitals. And we were trying to figure out how we could make it better for her, and there's really no way to make it better for her, because what we've determined is there's a lot of weird noises and sounds and smells and stuff like that, and what's a hospital like to humans in comparison to what a facility like that would be compared to, or in reference to, like, a banana? Mm-hmm. So, her is one big vet office, man. <laughs> Come back to doctors. And, and 30, maybe minutes, somebody's going to bust in here and stab you or something. Yeah. I mean, wait, she already has to get a little dose of Benadryl before she goes to most vet appointments. Yeah. It was funny today that we kind of had a pause on the podcast in the middle of everything. She kind of started climbing up on me because they were trying to give me medicine. <laughs> she was like, hey, let me just kind of sneak over here. Yeah. Let you know. She was going to tell the nurse no. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and we also determined that this hospital is slightly creepy. Yes. And we made a video. Oh. And it'll be coming out soonish. It depends, because pretty soon we're going to announce that we have a Patreon where we have all these videos and stuff that we've been putting up. Oh. Um, we just haven't really announced it yet because we don't have all our videos up yet. So we've been feeling, feeding, feeling? We've been filling up the Patreon with content. Yes. It's some kind of behind the scenes content. And things like that, which will eventually make its way, you know, to like Facebook and YouTube and everywhere else. Um, you know, I don't know. It's kind of a thing. Yeah. Not really a big fan necessarily of Patreon per se, but if it's a way to help sort of uh, kind of keep coffee flowing in the albino rhino and help us get back out to do what we need to do, we're going to do it. So yeah, you know, we figure we'll just kind of see what happens because we do have some things that are coming up that we alluded to. At the beginning of the year, um, I don't want to say, but we, do, we have our own customers. Anyway, I'm giving away too much. Well, I'll give away one thing. Okay. One of our listeners, very dear listener of ours, has suggested that we do our own investigation at Brown Mountain Lights. Yep. With him, he'd love to go. Yep. And uh, so it is lovely wife. Yep. So that might be something we do. Do I actually know these people? Yes, you do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we recently hanging out with them? Yes, oh, we were. Yeah, right on. Yes, he thinks that would be a great idea for Creep Geeks. I do. It would be fun. So, 
Okay, so originally we decided we were going to, when we came back to the East Coast, you know, from the uh, Southwest, we'll send like videos and do documentary type stuff where we investigate things. Well, this year, before Brooklyn Nick, we also said that we're going to be going places and doing events and sometimes there's conventions and conferences and things like that where we'd like to show up a couple of days early, investigate the local weirdness that's there, right? Mm-hmm. Make a video or documentary type situation thing happen. Attend the event, interview people that are there, and if we have to spend a day or two after to kind of finish up what we're doing, do that. Yeah. And do that for all these little events that we're going to be going to. And sort of put that content up in a place where we can put it all in one place and not necessarily have to worry too much about it being taken down or disappeared because, hey, I broke my neck. I lost my Facebook page. I lost a lot of I lost a lot of content because somebody hacked my account and did a bunch of crazy stuff. And of course, Facebook's like, "Well, can't get that back to you." And since now, yes, you know, Instagram can't get that back. So we decided to try to put stuff in a place where we have probably a better opportunity to keep it. And that's part of the reason why we started the the Patreon thing a while ago. Actually, yeah, is because we were worried about. Now that being said, Patreon can do the same thing. There really is no winning. With all of this, then we've just decided to put our content in multiple places. But to get back to the traveling, going to conferences, and, and doing videos and investigating things, we're looking forward to doing that again, and we're going to be doing that again. And we're going to be putting most of that content, but all of that content, on Patreon first before it makes its way out for a regular general consumption. I mean, we'll still have the regular podcast episodes. That's one thing that's not going to change right. um, because we love you guys. We'll, you know. Okay, doing it. Yeah, and uh, so that's nothing to freak out about, but we are going to have some of that really cool content on Patreon. Right, stuff that we wouldn't normally put out there, um, yeah. like the extended interview that we've had with a couple different people, including Seth Free Love, you know, that sort of thing. Um, we're putting it in place where if you're really interested and you think it's valuable and you really want to hear it, then you should go there and check it out. Or some of our paranormal evidence that we have never released. Right. So, so yeah. And so we're not, we're not pushing anything. All you we're just saying this is kind of what we're doing. So eventually we'll we'll have a link here and there if you want to check it out if you start to do that. But we're filling it up as we go along and making things better. And one of the things that we're looking forward to is March 21st. There's an event that's happening in Canton, Ohio yeah. for STM. Small. Right? Small time monsters. Yeah. The Mysteries and uh, Monsters event that's happening. We were supposed to be there. I don't know if we're going to be able to make that, honestly, and it, and it makes sense if we're no longer on the list for that since I kind of broke my neck a couple weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Um, we would like to make it there, but if you're in the Ohio area, you should totally go for like 12 bucks, man. You get to watch movies. Like, like all day. Yeah, like all day long in a small town monster movies, man, in, a, in an actual old haunted movie theater. I know, right? The Canton Palace Theater. Yeah, so we may have to reach out and say, hey, we may not be able to go and... and mm-hmm. You know, then this event, but we might show up as an attendee. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, but I, I don't know. I don't know if it's realistic or feasible for us to actually make know, it. Yeah, because it is still, I mean, even though it's the 21st and it's just now March. Yeah. I don't know if I'm going to be up to the task. If I don't want to go, but if I'm not, I'm realistic. At least because according to what I've been hearing from a lot of people, hey, you're doing really well. We expect this to be way worse. Yeah. I want my broken neck. No. Yeah, and then the next thing that is upcoming is going to be April 4th, yes. Wild and Weird Con from Wild and Weird, West Virginia. Yeah, we, are definitely going to be there for that. we have not met these guys, and they are amazing. They're wonderful people. Um, they reached out when you were in surgery. They were talking to me. It, they're just all-around good people. Yes. And at least one of them really want to catch up with you specifically to talk about your time in the military. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, but they're just all around good guys. We really plan on attending this event. Um, and yeah, that's not to say we didn't plan on attending. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we don't really know how how broken necks work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so we we definitely have April Fourth set as we will be there. Yeah. Uh, March twenty first, maybe too, too soon. So. But this is this is an event they are running completely on their own. Check the link in the show notes. Support these guys. I really want to see this event succeed. Yeah, so, be yeah. So, yeah, yeah. And that's really about all I got. And that's it. Uh, again, everything we've talked about so far is in the show notes for the podcast. I have included links to reaching out to us on social media, as well as our new Patreon. 
So if you're interested and if you need to email us again, that's going to be contact at creepgeeks.com. But we're always on social media, so you can shoot us a message. Facebook, our Facebook group, which is growing every day. Uh, Twitter, really need to push that Twitter. Y'all, y'all need to talk to us. Sure. Yeah. And check out our new Instagram since our Instagram did change. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Yep. And ladders. Yeah. Bye. Bye.